Hey everybody, welcome to Two Comic Book Dudes. Um, I'm Aaron, editor in chief of Comic Booked. Hey everybody, Justin, managing editor over at Comic Booked. And joining us today, uh, Anthony Conta and Brian David Marshall. Hello. And Brian's hey on guys. the phone. <laughs> hey, yeah. hey, Brian. Uh, well, we appreciate you guys taking time out of your busy schedules to join us to talk about uh, a great game, uh, Emergence Genesis. And uh, first thing we wanted to do was just to talk a little bit about uh, your background in uh, comics and, and the gaming industry. So, Anthony, do you want to get started? Sure. Um, I have been playing games for as long as I can remember. Um, been designing them three, four years now at this point. Uh, I designed a game uh, called Fun Employed and then uh, with a bunch of other people. And I've designed Emergency Genesis with a bunch of other people too, funded both through Kickstarter for my company, Urban Island Games. Nice. Awesome. And I saw Fun Employed on the site. I thought that looked really fun. I am gonna might have to order that. So <laughs> Awesome. Thanks. Okay. Cool. Yep. All right. And Brian, um, I know you have a pretty extensive background and if you wanna <laughs> you wanna reach all the way is back that, to your a, comic is, book roots. Is, is that a, is that a code word for old? <laughs> no, no. Sure. Hey, you've been in this as long as I have, probably. <laughs> uh, no, you know, it's, it's, it's my, my entire uh, adult life has been uh, either making comic books or games. I, I started out uh, pretty hey, young and naive hey. uh, with a comic book publishing company called uh, Malibu Entertainment and published a, a bunch of comic books of varying quality. Uh, and, I love Malibu. Uh, yep. Yeah. Well, some some of our earlier black and white work had a, had quite a range. Uh, it started out as a company called Eternity Comics, but uh, there were a lot of great people that came through the doors there. We started the careers of Evan Dorkin, Jimmy Palmiotti, uh, Scott Hanna, uh, Dean Haspiel. Uh, the list goes on and on. There's a, there a lot of people who, who got their first work there, uh, and it was my uh, you know, and uh, you know I've been I've been worked as a as a writer an editor uh, a publisher in the comic book industry i i sold a i had a series at marvel a short-lived series but it was a series uh called the craptacular b-side which was about uh, some slacker superheroes yep. and uh and then you know somewhere about uh 20 odd years ago my uh you know which I, i'd sort of been mono comics i discovered magic gathering and it uh, took me in a different direction in my career. I've been working largely in the gaming industry, uh, doing uh, as a tournament organizer, as a game designer, uh, as a gaming personality, where I, I go to events and do commentary on you know high-level matches of Magic. And uh, and now you know that's all sort of brought me here, where we have Emergence Genesis, which is this fusion of you know, very, very direct fusion of, of both of my sets of experiences. Cool. Nice. All right. Yeah. So let's uh, let's go ahead and talk about Emergence Genesis. So I have a copy of the game here. And actually, we just got done playing a game tonight. Um, I was going to try to record, uh, you know, I figured an hour and a half video of us playing a game probably wasn't as interesting <laughs> to people as us just talking about it. And it was interesting. Like you say, there, there's a lot of similarities between, uh, you know, the uh, some other collectible card games, and that one one connection I made right away uh, was that there's a lot of similarities in mechanics between uh, the, the current uh, Dice Masters game from WizKids in the in the way that you cycle the cards and you you know you buy back stuff and you you add to your pool as you're going. Um, it's same same kind of idea. So people who might be familiar with Dice Masters would be would kind of fall right in with this, uh, as well as the um, uh, Cryptozoic Games uh, DC deck building game, which is very similar. You're buying cards and you're playing, you know, with the DC heroes. So um, the thing that I liked about this was that it's a new team of heroes and villains. So you have new characters to to be introduced to and to learn about. Um, and we had a lot of fun with it. It's very very straightforward. Um, you know, there was were some things that we were questioning, like, well, what does this mean? What does this mean? We're reading back through the book, going, did I miss something? And uh, but you know, it didn't take us long to figure it out. Uh, like I said, our first game, four players, we played through the whole thing in about an hour and a half. And that was with, you know, wow. about a half an hour of understanding the rules. Um, and then the last 20 minutes or so of my wife going, can we just be done? So, <laughs> you know, it was fun. What what characters got played? Um, we had, oh, that's a good question. 
I got to go back in here and look. Um, is it zero off? Was the uh, zero, zero off, zero off might lead to some long games. He's he's pretty complicated. <laughs> he's, well, not think, adv- he's generally not advised for a first game. Yeah, I think he actually simplified the game because people were bidding it, his ability. So we, we'll talk a little bit about the the abilities. The four four characters we played were the Notch, Moxie, Zeroth, and the Accelerant. Those were our four characters. Um, oh, no. So so Zeroth, and uh, I'll hold him up here. Uh, and the card art is really cool. I like the art on these. Um, Zeroth's that's, ability. That's, that's, Lee, that's Lee Motor, by the way, who did the art for that card. Oh, okay. Awesome. So if you say so we had a lot, of, I mean, everybody who's done, who did art for this game is a, uh, you know, professional comic book artist, comic book color, graphic designer. Uh, one of the things we really set out to do uh, in creating the, these characters for, for to, to live in a game was to make them not be a cartoon of a game, if you, uh, of comics. If you know, sometimes you see that where people are trying to make a comic book thing that is not comic books, and it, it tends to be yeah. very uh, arch in that way. We, we really tried to, to be very true to like the superhero genre that we love and work with these artists that we really admire. So you have Giancarlo Caracuzza. Steve Ellis does a ton of the art in the game. He's the, he drew the box cover. Uh, Steve Riley's done some art, Jamal Eigel. Amanda Connor did the art for Moxie. Oh, nice. So it's, it's, a, it's, a pretty yeah. nice uh, it's a pretty nice assortment of talent. Nice. I thought I thought it looked familiar. Yep. So, yeah. Um, so yeah. So we'll talk about these four because these are ones we played tonight. So Zeroth's ability is very interesting. Um, once per turn, you can flip a card from the deck, or called the book in the game, and uh, each player secretly and this was kind of complicated secretly bids an amount of hit points and reveals their choice at the same time. So we were like, well, do we just write it down and then reveal it, or do we you know hold out our hands and then just reveal how many? points we want to do so we figured we just do the hand thing because then we could go up to five and it was you know that was the easiest way to decide um the player who has the highest bid puts the card on top of their deck and loses hit points equal to their bid so yeah every turn we did that and it actually sped the game up because it reduced some people's hit points right off the bat because they're going oh i'm gonna get this card five 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 every time we're like (laughs) now you're down to 10 hit points and we're all gonna punch you to death you know so it, it was kind of fun um but yeah very interesting mechanic and and it did um, add, add a little spice to the game. So that was a lot of fun. Um, the one that I played, I played Moxie. And oh, I really like her ability, and I hope I didn't play it wrong. <laughs> so every turn, I would, like, she once she got a token, I would remove the token, and then I would punch somebody. And then she'd do two points of damage, so she'd get a token again. You got it. And then I would just cycle that token <laughs> every turn. Yeah, mm-hmm. so. That's exactly uh, how it works, yeah. It was really fun. So, um, and it was great fun to attack once, using her token, do two damage, get a token back, use it again, attack again. So I was cycling tokens every attack almost. So yeah. that was, uh, yeah. people didn't like that, but it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> All it takes is one defend though. And then, uh, that's you know, true. It's hard to, it's hard to pull yep. off. So then you hope you had a tackle to do two plus the one right. and then you get through, you know, so, um, the notch was a little more. <laughs> yeah, there are some defend twos. I noticed that. Yeah. Um, the Notch was another player that uh, showed up in the game. Some cool art in that one. A little more complicated because this gets into the um, the types of of uh, tactic cards, and so that was one thing that confused us because it says the first time you acquire an acolyte card during your turn, and we were like, "What's an acolyte card?" <laughs> so I kind of skipped over that page uh, when I was initially reading the rules. But uh, as we go back, we can see that the um, there are class types. And each right. of the class yeah, types, four, then, you know. So yep. in, in our universe, we call superheroes emergence because their their powers have emerged. Uh, and uh, there's four classes of powers. So there's sculptors who have the ability to sort of shape things out of you know basically thin air. Uh, you know, you know, create fire sculptures or ice sculptures, or you know, some people can shape metal. Uh, we have nonstops who are very fast. Uh, they, they, you know, play around with time and speed and uh, teleportation generally is their, uh, you know, they're, they're really the, the agility-based characters. Uh, we have acolytes, which you just mentioned, who are all, you know, really you're, you're getting into like the martial arts and psionics and, you know, telepathy and mind control and all that kind of fun stuff. And then uh, 
and then the last the last group, which is, you talked about, Moxie, are the strong arms, and they they they're just really mean. <laughs> they <Yeah>. hit. <laughs> That's yes. what they. They're the strongest. They're the strongest characters in the universe. They're, they're the they're the strength based characters. That's cool. And so so all of those classes of superheroes, which are represented by these uh, four characters: Professor Helios, Moxie, Billy Stoppel, and the Abyss, as sort of the signature characters from each class. Um, and, and then all, you know, there's, and all the cards will tend to fall into one of those classes. Okay. Awesome. So our last one was probably the more complicated card. Um, and that was, uh, the accelerant and accelerants flurry ability was a little complicated. We were really trying to figure out exactly how that was supposed to work. Um, and I, I guess we understood the flurry keyword, as looking at how many costed cards had played uh, before it, right? But then right. I didn't really understand how. So does this basically replace flurry on another? Like if you have a card that has flurry, it would say this is your flurry number instead. Uh, so the way that the accelerant works is if you play three different costed cards, so mm-hmm. zero, one, two, or one, two, three, or however have you, you get to draw an extra card. So normally you have a six-card hand. Um, let's say I play a card that costs zero, then a card that costs two, then a card that costs three. My flurry okay. is three because I've played three different costed cards. Uh, I get to draw an extra card during the middle of my turn. Okay. So, okay. so regardless uh, of whether the – mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say at the beginning of the game, it's something that you know you can't do because all the cards cost the same uh, right. that you have in your deck. But as you acquire stuff, um, you'll be able to do it. Okay. So it's it's sequentially increasing. Mm-hmm. Like, So if you play a zero, one, two, like you said, then your flurry mm-hmm. would be two. I, it would be three because three because you played three. Anymore. Got it. Okay, you three. Could, you could play a zero, a one, and a seven, and that would also be three. Got it. Yep. Okay, so three different costed cards that are incrementally played. Three okay, or more. It, yeah. For, okay. for so yeah, I think we were confused by the fact that we thought we had to have a card with flurry mm-hmm. on it in order to activate the whole flurry idea. So that makes yeah, more we, sense. Yeah, as long as we yeah, played three. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but <laughs> you guys yeah, are. I think retroactively. Retroactively, you should give the win to the player who had the accelerant. <laughs> well, yeah, because they're drawing cards. More cards every turn. That's that is true. Yeah. Uh, no, he, actually, he was the first one to die. So. <laughs> um, I think it's because we, we're going to punch you. Yeah, right. <laughs> we all kind of teamed up on him, so it was you know. Um, but look at this, some of the other cards in the in the set. I really like this. Um, this is the hit points cap, uh, counter, and this was uh, you know great inclusion because then we didn't have to deal with getting a piece of paper. All we had to do is uh, find a bunch of little things to put on there to keep track of life. So it was nice that out of the box you really had everything you needed to play. I like that. Nice, awesome. So yeah, I, I'm re- I really um, like that too. Our graphic designer really just crushed it on this. Yeah, and it's great. I mean, every every card, you know, there's not one card that looked at and I was like, oh, you know, this is not great. But maybe the rabbit's foot, but <laughs> there was like one <laughs> card with the rabbit's foot on it, right? Um, but no, everything was good. I thought the art was was excellent. And the gameplay was easy, you know. Uh, we had all levels of, of experience around the table. Even my wife, who doesn't play a lot of games, and she, after a few turns, got the idea of, of okay, I'm going to punch you, I'm going to punch you. So um, it was it was fun. It was good. Awesome. Um, yeah, and any, I think, and I think oh. if, you, if you play it again, I think you'll find that, you know, it is. I think there is a, a little bit of complexity in terms of creating these very different mechanics for each of the classes of, of heroes. Um, but I think that once, once you've played with them once, like going back in, you know, the game will go a lot quicker. And, you know, you'll start to also sort of figure out these little puzzles that are in – built into each of the characters. You'll be like, oh, that's yeah. what I want to do. You know, and you start doing these things. And you probably even started to feel them towards the end of the game. You're like, oh, if I do this, oh, if I had done that, you know. It, yeah. there, there's, a, there's a lot of strategic depth to be uh, explored in it. Yeah, there was a couple cards that I picked up from the the, the way the board set up, and we'll just tell this for everybody out there. Um, you have your your deck, which is called the book, and then you have an area of your, of your um table that's called the page and those are six cards that you can purchase with your skill points throughout the game so it helps you to increase the size of your deck so that you have more tools to play with um as you play so it's it's really really cool but uh there's a a, um a, a keyword called erase which allows you to remove cards from the page and uh 
there's a card, and I, I don't remember right offhand what it was, uh, but it was attack X where X is equal to the number of cards erased so far that turn. Um, wipeout. And that was – oh, wipeout. Okay, so it's a challenge because I'm like, oh, how many can I erase this turn? And I actually did <laughs> three, and then I played that, and so that was cool. Um, and I played extra one point with Moxie, so uh, I did four points of damage, uh, and that was that was pretty neat. But I love the spread uh-huh. ability. Yes, yeah, I like the, the, the. I thought that was a cool, uh, uh, cool mechanic. So, uh, and spread was awesome because the spread lets you do damage consecutively around the table to everybody. Uh, so with Moxie's ability, if I could pump that up and do more damage, that's a <laughs> kind of a, a nice board wipe, you know. Uh, but just a bunch of mechanics that were awesome. I, I really. Uh, uh, really enjoyed this game. It was a lot of fun. Awesome. So, any plans yeah, moving was, forward? To, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I, you know, I'm sorry. I was stepping over you. I can't see, so I'm, <laughs> I can't pick up on visual cues. I apologize. That's okay. Uh, I was just going to say, moving forward, are there any uh, any plans to do expansions of this? I know the Kickstarter went really well. Um, so, do you feel like there's... Uh, there's room to do an expansion or do maybe another set with some new heroes and that kind of stuff. Um, what are, what are the plans or so, can you tell us? So, uh, I, I can certainly tell you, I mean, uh, yeah. you know, this is, so for, for me on this game, what, while I, I, I do a fair amount of game design, this is my role on this is largely as creative director. So, okay. uh, I, and I have a, a pretty deep world built with a lot of artwork that's already been, created, built around characters. So there's about 13, I think there's 13 characters in the first game. Uh, we have about 70. Wow. So <laughs> we have about 70 okay. characters in this universe, and uh, the characters have an arc, so there's some things that happen to them that change them, and you know, there's different versions of them that we'd like people to meet. So uh, there's definitely plans for expansions. Anthony is probably coming back today from playtesting some new characters that were talking about, you know, not sure exactly what the, the shape of those expansions will be or what the timeline will be, but we, okay. we I think we, we I, I have more characters, he has more game mechanics, uh, you know, we're, we're not going to stop now, right? <laughs> okay. Well, taking this into, uh, uh, you know, a comic book idea, is any, any thoughts of uh, doing a comic based off of the game or? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Actually, if you, if you look at the artwork, uh, on some of the cards, you you can almost see a narrative uh, yes. connecting some of the cards. That that's because most of the art for this game was actually created sequentially. Oh wow! Um, so cool. so um, while we may have not used every panel, all all the art from this is panels lifted out of a comic book page, uh, and we have we have a lot of pages. So yes, there there are definite plans to, um, and again, I don't know if it'd be you know, a, a graphic novel that we, you know, did on Kickstarter, or if it would be a, a digital thing that we, you know, released to promote the game or, but uh, there's, 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 there are definite plans over in 2016 to tell some, you know, sequential stories with these characters. Very cool. All right. Or I should say release them, but the stories have been told. <laughs> they just haven't been told to anyone outside of our office. <laughs> Cool. Well, th- we definitely look forward to that. You know, keep us in mind when you uh, when you get to that point. We'll uh, we'll do another interview. We'll do a promotion. We'll do a review. Whatever you need. So yeah, awesome. Uh, I mean, yeah, and Steve, cool Steve, Steve Ellis did most of that art. So I mean, I don't know if you guys know Steve's work on Only Living Boy. He did the just did the Guy Gardner um, two issue thing for DC. He's oh yeah. Uh, he does all he does all the AMC. Uh, he just did the Into the Badlands comic for AMC. Nice. Uh, he's yeah. he's fantastic. He's one of my favorite uh, comic book creators to work with. He's he's just he's so terrific. So uh, I'm really excited about getting some some superhero stuff. Uh, Very cool. He, do, he does he doesn't do a ton of superhero work. Nice. And yeah, we actually do a regular show for uh, Into the Badlands on Sunday nights. So we had to do it yesterday because it was a day late. But uh, we do a review show for that as soon as it's over. Walking Dead I- and that, but. I just yeah, I just posted my my recap on my website for episode. Yeah. So it's a great fighting, show. Fighting, I mean, yeah, it's great. But the fighting was definitely when any character other than Sonny is fighting, it is much worse than when Sonny is fighting. What, if, you if, mean you know, as far like as the... he, he's, 
as far as being him being an accomplished martial artist and everyone oh, yeah. sort of right. doing like a seven week martial arts boot camp. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I the the choreographed fighting though is is amazing in this show. I really oh, have been impressed with that overall. Uh, yeah. but yeah, Sonny's fighting is is just amazing. That that whole uh every scene with him has just been so cool. Um yeah. but the widow's fight was really cool Sunday night. That was uh that was a great way to kick off the episode. Yes, yes. And the heels were functional. They weren't just for show. Oh, for exactly. sure. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. They were practical. Right. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, that's that's a, a really neat show. So okay, so back to uh what we're talking about today. Um so Emergence Genesis um available now, right? They can go to Urban Island uh is it Urban Island Games dot com? Mm-hmm. That's that's right. It's Urban Island okay. Games dot com. Okay, and what we'll do, we'll have uh, some links in the uh, description for the video as well as being in the article uh, when we post that up on, on comicbook.com. So um, you can click through there. Do uh, you guys want to give out your uh, information as far as how people can stalk you on social media? Sure, sure. But I also, I also want to say that the, the game right now has been uh, uh, solicited to uh, retailers through ACD distribution. Oh. So like if you have a game store or a comic store that carries games near you and you want to check it out, you should definitely tell your store owner that you, you want Emergence Genesis and they will, uh, you know, they can order it, get it right now. You know, the copies are available. Uh, I will, you know, tell your store owner to tweet at me. I'll tie it into your question at Top 8 Games that they're carrying the game and I will retweet and, you know, say really nice things about them on social media. So, you know, it's a good chance to get some promotion for your for your local game store or comic shop. Very cool. Uh, you know, yeah, we're 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 really excited about it. We really want uh, you know people to uh, to give it a try. Awesome. Any top, plans? Top oh. eight games is my is my is my Twitter. So with with the number eight one word. Okay. I'm I'm uh, AC Maverick, uh, all the same word, and we also have a Facebook page. Uh, just search Emergence Genesis on Facebook, and we're getting a Twitter handle up and running for the game as well for FAQs and anything about the game really. Awesome. Okay, we'll include all those links on our article as well. So, any uh, any plans to have this uh, at uh, like uh, any of the conventions this next year to show off? Or yeah, we um... Go ahead, Anthony. Sorry. Sure. Uh, as you can say, uh, we'd love to be at um, Gen Con. Um, we just brought the game to Chicago Toy Fair, uh, so we're sure enough there. Um, any convention I can try to make it to, I'm going to try to make it to some PAXs this year. I was like PAX South, PAX East, so we're hoping to bring the game there. Um, okay. Just anywhere we can get to, really, to show it. Awesome. Yeah, I always right. have a copy of my knapsack, so if you see me at a, <laughs> you know, off hours at a Magic tournament or, you know, at a comic convention or something, you know, come up, say hello, and, you know, I'm, I'm always happy to play. Cool. Very cool. And that's, that's one nice thing. It is two to four players. So two people could just sit down and play. Um, I, I like that. Plus I like the multiplayer concept of having the four, four characters or four players. I would love it. To, like I have five kids. So if all of us can sit down at the table, everybody wants to play their own character. So I almost need two or three of these boxes, <laughs> you know, get everybody <laughs> set at the table that way. Uh, definitely would make for a longer game, but mm-hmm. uh, you know, that's something that we would, we would want is that uh, increased multiplayer capacity. So um yeah. All right, Justin, did you have any questions, anything you wanted to ask? I was just going to say, where where did you, you know, kind of get this, or where did the characters come from when you were coming up with this game? You know, I, uh, I, I've, I've worked with, uh, in the superhero genre a lot in my career. I, I, I you know, I think about comics all the time. And, and again, I've, I've, you know, created characters and built worlds for games and uh, I really wanted to create a superhero universe that that uh, lent itself to game, you know, to being used in games, and uh, mm-hmm. it, it was sort of like I say, it really is this, this combination of like experiences and people that I knew who I could talk to about a character or something, and, and that they would, you know, Steve Ellis and I can sort of, you know, throw out comic book references and artist references, and you know, he can we can just come up with this character that you know just look spot on that is, you know, just kind of a product of, you know, all the long boxes we've poured over in our <laughs> lives. Um, but it, it, it's, it's really just, uh, it just started with the four main characters and, uh, you know, they just sort of spiraled out from there. You know, the story, as, as we told these, 
you know, as I said, we've been building this, this comic universe, writing stories about them. And gotcha. as we've done that, the characters have just um, sort of told their own story in, in a lot of, you know, in that, that great way when you feel, you know, when something clicks, uh, like Aloysius Zero, uh, the character we were talking about earlier, he wasn't even originally a, a, a factor in the, in the project. And he kind of, it felt like almost forced his way into existence. <laughs> like by the like he's a, he's a very he's a very interesting pivotal character in this universe uh and his motives and his abilities and his uh future in this world are all very uh, big central mysteries to, to to the story and uh i i'm not convinced that he's not somehow manipulating me to tell this story because he he really like it, it was one of those kind of processes like oh all of a sudden, I knew all these things about him and all about all these other characters. So, uh, you know, it's pretty cool. You know, the next uh, it, it was just it was just that kind of great creative process of you know wanting to do something and and really just like opening up a vein of my love for superhero comics and letting it pour out. Awesome, awesome. Yep. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Okay. So, uh, the one question we ask, you know, anytime we get somebody on the show, is what was your Personally, what was your first comic that you remember really reading and loving? Not just, you know, I mean, I when I started in the comics, it was like I picked up stuff like Old House of Mystery and different things. But there was, you know, one comic that I remember reading back in, uh, you know, a long time ago. Um, and it was my, my first comic. So what was what would you say, like, Anthony, what was your first comic book? Yeah, I, I feel like it was like a school fair. And I was just walking around and there's just a stack of various different covers. And the one that stands out the most to me um, was like a Harlequin cover. Like, 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 you know, Harley Quinn from, from Batman. And I don't know what she was or anything like that, but like the first thing that I can really remember about a comic book specifically um, Um, was that cover. I mean, I've been influenced a lot by like the X Men TV show, right? Like, and you know, other forms of media. But as far as a book, book, I would say that definitely. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Okay. And Brian, how about you? I could answer, <laughs> answer that three ways. I could say uh, the first issue of X Men: Days of Future Past, which pulled me back into comics as a teenager. Uh, I could say the Superman annual that Alan Moore wrote, the man who has everything, which oh, yeah. was like changed my life in terms of what could a comic book be. But the first thing that I really remember reading, and I don't remember the issue number now, but it's an early Spider-Man. I was like, I was like probably five years old and it was at a barber shop, and it was Spider-Man versus the man wolf. And it was like, uh, one of those old covers, you remember where there would actually be dialogue on them. And, yeah. you know, like very like clunky expositional dialogue, but it would tell you a little bit of the story inside. And it's just Spider-Man really agonizing about having to defeat the man wolf, but knowing that he's really jo- J. Jonah Jameson's son and that he's a good guy and he doesn't want to hurt him. And like, like that whole thing just drew me in. And that was the first comic that I ever remember. I could still see it lying on the table at this barbershop, like around like uh-huh. some sad fat comics and some Archie comics. But that one cover like pulled me in, and like I've never looked back in terms of being being a fan of the superhero genre. Very cool. Wow. Yeah. Very nice. All right. Okay. Well, we really appreciate you guys. Like I said, taking time out of your uh, your busy schedules to to talk about the game and talk about your uh, your experiences and and comics in general. And uh, you know, anytime you guys need anything, let us know. Uh, we're happy to do another interview uh, down the road as awesome. uh, as things change or as new new games come out or. Um, you know, other projects that you might have. So, sounds great. Right. Okay, cool. Yeah, we, we, um, we love to hear. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks. All right, and you can uh, f- you can find us at comicbook.com. That's our website. Um, our we have two Facebook pages, Comic Booked and uh, Two Comic Book Dudes. Um, both of those uh, have you know our articles or our videos. Um, you can also find us on Twitter and all of those other places too. Um, if you have questions or comments or anything like that, please like, share, subscribe, comment on this video. Uh, if you've got specific questions for Anthony or for Brian, we'll be sure to get those to them. And uh, we'll also have, like I said, all of their uh, contact information uh, linked in this video and as well on, on the uh, article that we'll have up on the website. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. We appreciate your time, and we'll talk to you later. 
All right. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Okay. All right. Thanks. See ya. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks. Right. See you guys. Right, bye.